Welcome, this is a lighting breakdown of an atrium. So far we don't have any lights, it's um, just the outside sky you can see, the reflection of the sky in a glass, and this is a luminant material. The first thing we're gonna have a look at is the sun. This is the main sun light source. And I was trying to find a light that gives a nice pattern on the floor. Let's have a look at this. And by making the light go in horizontal stripes, I tried to calm down the image. Because if you have a look at the model, you can see it is it is quite complex already and um, I didn't want to make it even more hectical or diagonal, diagonal and so on by making a strange sunlight so I used a very very um, rather calm sunlight which just runs along um, the stairs and kind of shows if what is vertical and what's horizontal. That's all I wanted. I made it uh, slightly blurred. If you have a look at the infinite angle, I made it um, slightly bigger, so it's, it's rather diffuse, especially here and there, I think it counts. The sunlight is um, made out of an infinite light using an area shadow um, to get this effect and it's very intense, 170% and it's using a rather warm, warm color. I don't need any fall off because uh, sunlight um, doesn't really, uh, I think, it, it doesn't really uh, kind of attenuate, it's, it's always strong or has the same strength. To break up the sun effect I used an aura light as well, which is of course much more diffuse. And this would be uh, the situation if we have a cloudy sky. In conjunction, the sun and the sun aura look like this. The next thing is... Um, let's have a look. Well, another aura is what I added in the end to have like um, to break up the image in a foreground and a background. But we will have a look at this later on. I can tell you right now that the image was a bit too same same all over the surfaces. It was just one color and so I wanted to have an accent right in the foreground. I chose this light um, and called it Hall and it's basically a big area light. Um, you can see the dimensions here which is located right in the openings of my hall. So everywhere where much light can come down, even there are no actual windows in these places. I can show you here. I place these area lights right here and it's just a very very um, yeah a bluish light which attenuates which has a fall-off and which is uh, very big and 
therefore very very soft And the beauty starts if you mix it up, this uh, the cold light with the warm light. So let's have a look. This is the warm sun and the bluish skylight. And because this is a little boring, I put that other sun aura in the foreground. That aura has been um, look, this is a square spot, and uh, let's have a look how it is located. It starts from the the top story and just goes uh, all the way down to the ground. It's using a linear fall off. That way, I can control that the light power, the intensity is 100% here at the top and is 0% around here. So what we ultimately get is a light which is hardly touching the ground, just a bit. And this is how the blue and the warm diffuse light look together. Just in comparison, without the aura, it would be looking very, very dull, very uniform. Okay, let's disable those and have a look at, um, not this, but the window. The windows are part of the so to speak, logical lights. They are placed where you would expect the window light coming through the roof windows. And this is their effect. It's area lights, again rectangular area lights with a blue note to it and because of their size they have a rather diffuse shadow. What I like about the window lights is that they pronounce the, the kind of borders here. So I have a distinction later on between the vertical parts and the horizontal ones. So it's really there to pronounce the shapes in your room. I instance them, so for every window there's an instance of the original 100% and it's using the physical accurate falloff. Let's see it in conjunction with the other lights so far. And okay, that's the impression you get. What we're still missing is the kind of downsides of everything. But it's uh, not bad so far because I at least have a distinction between what's coming from top and what's really uh, the downsides. Another thing I um, kept an eye on is um, the area which is underneath uh, that kind of ceiling part. I didn't want it to be too shadowy, so you really need to make sure your area lights are illuminating this area a bit as well. Okay, what's missing? Um, you already see that um, in my window lights I had um, this kind of shadow settings, so you always should downsample 
as far as possible because it's already taking a lot of time uh, to render this image. I tried to um, illuminate these um, tiny um, windows up here, but it wasn't really worth it. Um, maybe I did it, I can show you. I placed um, really, really small square spots in there in this case. Spots sometimes have an advantage, they, they can be um, placed really, really defined. So if you really want to go for those stripes, you can just build them in as usual. Uh, uh, shadow area shadows and inverse square fall off was used. They are just sh going vertically down, of course. Okay, this guy was um, taken out from creating GI, so no global illumination here, um, just for more control. And then I had some shininess, which is only important if you're up here. And those shine lights, um, what they do is, let's have a look. Um, they are placed here. A square spot, which is... Um, I'm creating a visible, you can activate it. Oh, I didn't do that, obviously. I think it was once set to um, be visible. So um, let's just see how it turns out. You can get these kind of uh, very foggy lights Sometimes this looks kind of nice, especially if you combine it with maybe the sunlight or so. It really works together. And if you don't sample it too high, then um, let's have a look. Among visibility, there's like a sampling distance of 20 centimeters and a reduced brightness. And this really kind of helps to create depth in the image. You can see that, for example, this shining light is interrupted by this line. And so the room has several layers of depth. All right. The window lights were already discussed and uh, I would like to show you everything in conjunction. So we have a light situation like this. And another thing I did was I put a spotlight pointing downwards in every lamp there is. And I used an IES profile. So the type's IES and you can um, load in an IES file from the web um, under photometric. The rest, well, it's uh, again um, just an intensity uh, color which has some slight yellowish tint to it and it, it is falling off, of course. And if you want to have a look at it exclusively, so to speak, um, it's looking like this.
What I find important is the position of the lights, so you might want to fake it and pull it up a little, because this is a visual line and this shouldn't be in the center of this wall. It, it always looks a little better, I think, if it's around like three quarters or so, so a bit higher. And what I don't like about it so much is that it's kind of the way it's mixing up here on the floor. Let's have a look at it. Um, this is too complex in my opinion. So what we could do is reduce the distance those lights can go. So you don't have this strange mix of lights in, in the middle. It looks way too patchy. But you can also argue that those other lines are blending over the, those spotlights we just had. So throwing it all together, it looks like this so far. And you can tell by the darkness of the image that it was not meant to be kept like this, but global illumination will play a role. So let's activate global illumination. I don't have the most recent uh, cinema version installed right now, but um, you, you should go for an Iridian's uh, cache and uh, I used a diffuse depth of 5 rays, which is a good balance between um, transporting light everywhere but not making uh, my contrast too low. Because if, if I shoot rays around the room forever, it will get very grayish and, and not too exciting. And in this case, I didn't even play much with the intensities, I kept them the way they were. And to save rendering time, I used a low sampling rate, a low record density, not much smoothing, and I deactivated everything else which could cost time. Among the options, I reduced the rays, the ray depths to five each. And yeah. Uh, just have a look, I deactivated all the stuff that's uh, in bold letters. So the result of this is an image like that. And you can tell already on the left side that this image looks a bit like um, what I was afraid of, that it is too grayish and uh, the contrast is way too low. But um, that's kind of um, the strategy is to, to um, not have two bright areas and no dark areas and then you can later on um, increase the contrast in Photoshop. So the only thing you cannot fight is total brightness or total darkness later on. And uh, what I don't like about the image at the moment is that all the corners are not defined you could make them more visible and um, let's even go down further to have more of those corners maybe like so and what I did to visualize the corners is using ambient occlusion with a low sampling rate and um, like 50% um, gray to it and let's have a look at the maximum ray length has been altered as well. I shrinked it down to 70 units 
to don't get a too dirty look overall. So let's re-render it. And you can tell it's getting a little better, the, the contrast or the impression of contrast at least got better. You now have much better definition within the detailed areas. And despite the fact we're not using any textures in this uh, lighting study or light study, um, I'm, I'm fairly happy with it. I don't like this gray area too much. But um, let's have a look when we're finished. You can use object low, which will help those little lights. Let's use render region to speed things a little up. And in the final render, it, it should get more visible. So um, that was this part and the other part was right here. This was the very very dull image. And um, I copied that image to which was looking like this. Um, it's a motion blur which has been um, darkened by a curve which looked around like this. And I changed the hue in the middle, just um, moving around some colors to, to get a difference. Then I took an S-curve to really get the contrast back in the image. I made the corners darker and a bit bluish. And um, this is the image, the final image so far. Thank you for watching.